Sharks may sometimes engage in aggressive behaviors, often motivated by various instincts. These include curiosity or a mistaken identification of other creatures as their typical prey. Such interactions are usually sparked by the shark's interest in unusual movements or silhouettes in their vicinity, showcasing the intricate nature of their behavioral patterns. These encounters are most common in areas frequented by humans for aquatic activities, where shark habitats overlap with those of other species, even in relatively shallow waters. This overlap between sharks and what they may perceive as potential prey highlights the intricate dynamics of predator-prey relationships within the marine ecosystem. Following is a collection of six accounts of shark encounters in the peaceful seaside area of Tidewater, located along South Africa's picturesque garden route, known for its breathtaking landscapes and marine marvels, the year was 2010. This beautiful enclave, renowned for its scenic attraction and the hidden dangers beneath its giant waves, became the scenery for a profoundly moving incident of loss, perseverance, and the complex relationship between humans and the natural world. Elena Ramirez, aged 34, an architect whose soul was as vast and deep as the ocean, had recently settled in Tidewater, drawn by a quest for peace and a muse for her designs. Despite being an outsider, Elena quickly became a beloved figure in the community. Her laughter was a familiar melody at the local markets, and her kindness was a balm to many. The secluded Turtle Bay became her refuge, where she, accompanied by Max, her loyal and vibrant dog, would wander the shores at dawn, finding solace and inspiration. Elena and Max embarked on their customary sunrise expedition along the beach on a morning destined to be etched in their memory. With its expansive sands and towering cliffs, this stretch of coastline had always been their haven, where the land met the sea in stunning harmony. The day broke with the sky painted in soft hues of pastels, promising the gentle warmth of the sun, a picture of perfection until the sea revealed its unpredictable and formidable nature. Max, ever-spirited, pursued a frisbee with uninhibited joy, his barks of delight harmonizing with the serene morning. But this peace was abruptly disrupted. A great white shark, perhaps lured by the shifting currents or in pursuit of its next meal, made its way closer to the shore. These apex predators, known for their formidable size and unparalleled strength, embody the ocean's untamed force. This particular shark moving closer with a stealth that belied its size, set its sights on the unsuspecting pair. The ensuing attack was both sudden and ferocious. Just as Max reached his beloved toy, the shark surfaced, its mighty jaws closing on him. Time seemed to stand still for Elena as she watched the harrowing scene unfold. The water churned violently, the shark dragging Max into the depths. Driven by a surge of adrenaline, Elena moved instinctively towards the turmoil, her desperate cries swallowed by the roar of the waves. Frozen at the water's edge, realization struck Elena. The ocean's depths, now a domain of fear, held a threat beyond her challenge. Onlookers, drawn by her cries, held her back, saving her from a rash and likely deadly act. As she stood, the harsh truth settled in. Max was gone, and with him, a piece of her heart. In the wake of this tragedy, Elena grappled with a storm of emotions. Sorrow for Max, rage against fate, and guilt for her powerlessness. The question of what if haunted her even as she knew the shark's might was unchallengeable. The community's efforts to comfort her felt hollow, unable to fill the void Max left. From her grief emerged a purpose. Elena channeled her pain into Max's vigil, a movement to educate on the dangers within their idyllic waters, driven by a determination to spare others her agony. Her initiative quickly gathered support, spreading awareness through signs and workshops, teaching the ocean's beauty and hazards. Elena's path was fraught with obstacles. Some locals resisted seeing her campaign as an attack on their lifestyle and the town's tourism. Her proposals sparked debate, dividing the community and placing Elena at the storm's heart. Yet her message found resonance, drawing support from beyond Tidewater. Environmentalists and experts joined her, advocating for a balanced respect for the ocean. A crucial town hall meeting saw Elena advocating for coexistence with nature. Her plea, heartfelt and compelling, emphasized respect over fear. The resolution came not in restrictions, but in an educational program embodying Max's legacy, a testament to love's power to enact change. 
Elena remained a figure by the shore, her eyes often drawn to where sea and sky merge. Though the pain of Max's loss lingered, solace came from knowing his memory lived on, guiding others toward safety. The incident, rooted in Tidewater's serene shores, was more than a tale of loss. It was a narrative of hope, resilience, and the profound capacity for transformation after tragedy, highlighting the enduring bond between humanity and the vast, mysterious sea. As Jack Thompson ventured deeper into the remote waters of Alaska, his kayak slicing through the tranquil surface of the Pacific Ocean, he couldn't shake the exhilaration that coursed through his veins. It was the summer of 2008, and Jack had embarked on a solo expedition, seeking solace and adventure amidst the rugged beauty of the Alaskan wilderness. Setting out from the picturesque town of Sitka, Jack had bid farewell to civilization, eager to immerse himself in the untamed grandeur of nature. With each stroke of his paddle, he felt a sense of freedom wash over him, leaving behind the stresses and worries of everyday life. The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a warm glow over the towering mountains and dense forests that lined the rugged coastline. The air was crisp and refreshing, carrying the faint scent of salt and pine. For Jack, this was paradise, a world untouched by man's hand, where the wild reigned supreme. As he paddled more profoundly into the wilderness, Jack found himself lost in the beauty of his surroundings. Snow-capped peaks loomed overhead, their jagged edges starkly contrasted against the azure sky. Seals basked lazily on rocky outcrops while bald eagles soared high above, their piercing cries echoing across the water. But amidst the serenity of his surroundings, Jack couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gnawed at the edges of his mind. Deep down, he knew the wilderness could be unforgiving, its beauty masking hidden dangers that lurked beneath the surface. It was midday when an unexpected disturbance shattered Jack's tranquil reverie. Out of the corner of his eye, he caught sight of a dark shape gliding beneath the surface of the water. At first, he dismissed it as a trick of the light, but as he continued paddling, the shape drew closer until he could make out the unmistakable silhouette of a shark. Panic surged through Jack's veins as he realized the gravity of the situation. He was miles from the nearest civilization, alone and vulnerable in the ocean's vastness. With each passing moment, the shark drew closer, its dorsal fin slicing through the water with ominous intent. Desperate to defend himself, Jack frantically searched for any means of protection. Grabbing his paddle, he brandished it like a makeshift weapon, ready to fend off the approaching predator. But the shark was relentless, circling Jack's kayak with unnerving persistence. As the tension mounted, Jack racked his brain for a solution. Suddenly, an idea struck him. Remembering a trick he had learned as a wilderness survivalist, Jack reached into his backpack and retrieved a canister of pepper spray. With trembling hands, he sprayed a cloud of the aromatic substance into the air, hoping to deter the shark with its potent scent. To his relief, the tactic worked. The shark recoiled at the noxious odor, its sleek form vanishing beneath the waves in a flurry of bubbles. Seizing the opportunity, Jack paddled with all his might, putting as much distance as possible between himself and the predator. Hours passed, and Jack's arms ached from exertion, but he refused to give up. With steely determination, he pressed onward, navigating through treacherous currents and swirling eddies. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he caught sight of the familiar shoreline of Sitka looming in the distance. With a surge of adrenaline, Jack paddled towards safety, his heart pounding in his chest. As he reached the safety of the shore, he collapsed onto the sand, overcome with exhaustion and relief. After collapsing onto the sand, Jack lay there for what felt like an eternity, his body racked with exhaustion and relief. It wasn't long before a group of fellow kayakers, drawn by the commotion, rushed to his aid. With gentle hands and words of encouragement, they helped Jack to his feet and guided him to a nearby campsite where they tended to his needs. They offered him food and water, wrapping him in warm blankets to ward off the chill of the evening air. As Jack recounted his harrowing encounter with the shark, the group listened intently, their faces a mixture of awe and sympathy. Despite the trauma he had endured, Jack couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the kindness and compassion shown to him by his fellow adventurers. At that moment, he realized that he was not alone, that even in the most remote corners of the wilderness, people were always willing to lend a helping hand. 
As he drifted off to sleep, surrounded by the warmth and camaraderie of his newfound friends, Jack knew that he would forever be grateful for their timely intervention. In the days that followed, Jack's story spread like wildfire through the small town of Sitka, earning him the admiration of his fellow adventurers and the respect of the local community. Though he had faced death head-on and emerged victorious, Jack knew that he would forever carry the memory of his kayak encounter with him, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Jack lay on the shore as the sun lay below the horizon, and the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, gazing up at the vast expanse of the universe above him. At that moment, he felt a profound gratitude for the beauty of the natural world and the precious gift of life itself. And as he drifted off to sleep, lulled by the gentle lapping of the waves against the shore, Jack knew that he would always cherish the memory of his Alaskan adventure. This kayak encounter tested his courage and strength, and ultimately reaffirmed his love for the wild and untamed beauty of the world around him. In the vast expanse of the Southern Ocean, off the coast of Australia, lies the rugged beauty of Port Lincoln, known for its stunning landscapes and adventurous spirit. It was here in the year 2011 that the newlywed couple, Sarah and John, found themselves embarking on their honeymoon. Port Lincoln, a small coastal town nestled amidst rolling hills and azure waters, was a haven for thrill-seekers. It was renowned for its cage-diving expeditions, offering brave souls the chance to come face-to-face -face with the ocean's apex predators, sharks. Sarah and John, both adrenaline junkies at heart, eagerly signed up for the cage-diving experience. Little did they know, their honeymoon adventure would soon become harrowing. As the morning sun cast its golden rays over the horizon, Sarah and John boarded the dive boat, their hearts racing excitedly. They were joined by a handful of other thrill-seekers, all eager to glimpse the majestic great white sharks that roamed the waters below. The boat sailed out into the open sea, leaving the safety of the harbor behind. Soon they arrived at their destination, a remote stretch of ocean where the sharks were known to frequent. The crew wasted no time lowering the sturdy metal cage into the water and securing it to the side of the boat. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, Sarah and John donned their wetsuits and eagerly descended into the cage. The water was chilly against their skin, but the excitement of what lay ahead kept them warm. As they submerged beneath the surface, they were greeted by an otherworldly sight. The crystal clear waters teemed with life, vibrant corals, darting fish, and the occasional shadowy silhouette of a passing shark. But it was the moment when the first great white appeared that their hearts truly began to race. The massive creature glided effortlessly through the water, its sleek body glistening in the sunlight. Sarah couldn't help but gasp in awe at the sight. They watched in fascination for hours as the shark circled the cage, their powerful presence sending shivers down their spines. It was an experience unlike any other, and the beauty and majesty of these apex predators enraptured Sarah and John. However, as the day wore on and the sun began to sink lower in the sky, the mood aboard the boat shifted. Dark clouds gathered on the horizon, casting an ominous shadow over the water. The wind picked up, whipping the waves into a frenzy. Concern etched on their faces, the crew began to prepare for the journey back to shore. But disaster struck as they hoisted the cage back onto the boat. With a loud crack, the cage lurched suddenly to one side, sending Sarah tumbling against the metal bars. Panic surged through her veins as she realized the cage had been damaged, leaving a gaping hole on its side. Heart pounding in his chest, John frantically reached out to grab her hand, his eyes wide with fear. But before he could pull her to safety, a shadowy figure loomed out of the depths, a massive great white shark drawn by the thrashing of panicked prey. Time seemed to stand still as Sarah and John stared into the cold, unblinking eyes of the predator. Fear clawed at their hearts as they realized the danger they were in. Trapped in a damaged cage with a hungry shark lurking just outside, their honeymoon had turned into a nightmare. Desperation fueled John's actions as he searched for a way to free Sarah from the cage. He reached for a nearby wrench with trembling hands, his mind racing with possibilities. But as he tried to pry open the damaged bars, he realized with a sinking feeling that it was futile. Meanwhile, the crew aboard the boat sprang into action, deploying emergency protocols in a desperate bid to save the trapped couple. But their efforts seemed hopeless, with the storm raging around them and the shark circling ever closer. 
As the minutes ticked by, Sarah and John clung to each other, their love a beacon of hope in the darkness. With every passing moment, the jaws of the great white shark drew closer, its razor-sharp teeth glinting in the fading light. But just when all hope seemed lost, a miracle occurred. With a sudden surge of strength born of sheer determination, John managed to pry open the damaged bars of the cage. Pulling Sarah to safety just as the shark lunged forward, jaws snapping shut inches from her feet. Gasping for breath, they surfaced to the tumultuous cheers of the crew aboard the boat. Relief washed over them in a wave as they were hoisted back onto the deck safety, their bodies trembling with exhaustion and adrenaline. For a fleeting moment, they had genuinely believed that their lives were about to end in the jaws of the great white shark, but as they were hoisted back onto the safety of the dive boat, the crew sprang into action, rushing to their aid with urgency etched on their faces. Sarah's hands shook as she clasped John's tightly, their eyes locking in a silent exchange of gratitude for their miraculous escape. The crew swiftly administered first aid, tending to the cuts and bruises that marred their bodies from the frantic struggle to escape the damaged cage. Sarah winced as the antiseptic was applied to a gash on her arm, the pain a stark reminder of the peril they had narrowly escaped. But despite the physical wounds, the emotional toll weighed heaviest on their hearts. As they huddled together on the deck, wrapped in blankets and nursing hot cups of tea, they recounted the harrowing moments when they had faced death head-on, their voices trembling with emotion. Sarah's hands shook as she recounted the heart-stopping moment when the shark had lunged for her, its gaping jaws mere inches from her feet. She could still feel the rush of icy fear coursing through her veins as she scrambled desperately to escape the cage. John's voice quivered as he described the gut-wrenching terror of watching helplessly as Sarah had been trapped inside the damaged cage, the sight of the shark circling hungrily just beyond the bars forever etched into his memory. But even as they relived the terror of the ordeal, they found solace in each other's arms, drawing strength from the bond that had carried them through the darkest times. The crew stood silently around them, their faces somber with the gravity of the situation. As the boat sailed back to shore, guided by the steady hand of the captain, Sarah and John remained wrapped in each other's embrace, their hearts still racing with the memory of the horrors they had faced. But with every passing moment, the fear began to fade, replaced by a profound gratitude for the precious gift of life. In the days that followed, as they recovered from their ordeal, Sarah and John found themselves drawn even closer together, their bond forged in the crucible of danger. They cherished every moment they shared, savoring the simple joys of life with a newfound appreciation. And though the memory of the honeymoon horror would linger with them forever, they knew it was a testament to the strength of their love, a love that could conquer even the greatest of fears. Huddled together, weathering the aftermath, they recognized the enormity of what they had endured, a trial by fire for their bond, a testament to their unwavering commitment. As they made their way back to the safety of the shore, their hands interlocked, a silent promise passed between them, to treasure each passing moment in shared gratitude. They had braved the storm of a harrowing ordeal on what was meant to be a celebration of their union. Yet, they emerged not just unscathed, but fortified, their love proving to be an unbreakable force against the tides of adversity. In the far reaches of Maine's coastline, shrouded in mist and the relentless crash of waves, the Rockhaven Lighthouse stood as a solitary sentinel against the ravages of time and sea. This tale begins in 1998, when Amelia Winters, a woman of steel resolve and indomitable spirit, took the helm as the lighthouse's keeper, stepping into a role that was as much a calling as it was a duty. The island on which the lighthouse stood was an enigma, its jagged cliffs and whispering winds holding secrets of days long past. Amelia, undeterred by the ghost stories and legends that haunted the island lore, devoted herself to her task with unwavering dedication. Yet the island and its surrounding waters seemed to awaken with a series of unnerving events. Sharks, seldom seen in these cold northern waters, began to appear with alarming frequency, their attacks growing more bold and terrifying with each passing day. The island's inhabitants, a tight-knit community of anglers and their families, grew increasingly anxious, their fear palpable in the salted air. But Amelia's courage did not falter. She perceived these events not as omens of doom, but as puzzles to be solved. 
And so, under the cover of a storm that raged with the fury of the ages, she descended into the bowels of the lighthouse, where records dating back centuries were kept. In this place, where time seemed to stand still, she discovered the island's dark history. It had once been the center of a prosperous fishing village, its people living in harmony with the sea. But as hard times fell, the villagers turned to dark rituals, seeking to appease the gods of the deep with a covenant forged in shadow. This pact Amelia Learned had cursed the waters around the island, a curse that now threatened to consume them all. Refusing to stand idly by while this ancient darkness ravaged her new home, Amelia set out to uncover the truth behind the curse. Her quest led her deep into the island's heart, through forests that seemed to watch her every move and along cliffs that whispered of despair. With each step, the curse's grip seemed to tighten, manifesting in eerie and ominous signs. Yet, in these darkest moments, Amelia found an unlikely ally in Benjamin Hayes, a historian with ties to the island's mysterious past. Amelia and Benjamin embarked on a journey fraught with danger and discovery. They uncovered hidden paths, deciphered ancient scripts, and braved the stormy sea, all searching for an artifact believed to hold the power to break the curse. Along the way, they encountered remnants of the past, the ruins of the old village, artifacts left behind by those who had tried and failed to overcome the curse, and most chillingly, the guardians of the deep, creatures twisted by the dark pact that had been made. As they neared the island's heart, where the artifact was said to be hidden, the very forces of nature seemed to conspire against them. The storm reached its apex, and from the depths emerged a beast of legend, a shark of unimaginable size and ferocity. It was the embodiment of the curse, a protector of the dark pact that had doomed the island. Many would have faltered in the face of such terror, but Amelia Winters stood resolute. She confronted the beast with a courage born of conviction and a heart unyielded by fear. And in that moment, with a strike fueled by hope and a determination to protect her home, she shattered the artifact, breaking the curse and banishing the darkness back to the depths from where it came. The storm abated, the sea calmed, and peace returned to the island for the first time in generations. The sharks vanished as swiftly as they had appeared, and the island's inhabitants emerged from their homes, stunned by the sudden change. Amelia's bravery had not only saved them from the immediate threat, but had also lifted the veil of fear that had shrouded the island for centuries. In the days that followed, Amelia's legend grew. She was no longer just the lighthouse keeper. She had become a guardian of the island, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. Standing atop the cliffs, looking over the sea that had tested her in ways she could never have imagined, Amelia knew she had found her purpose. But even as life returned to normal, Amelia understood that the island would forever hold its secrets, its history a tapestry woven with threads of joy and sorrow, darkness and light. And though she had faced the abyss and emerged victorious, the sea's mysteries remained endless and unfathomable. Yet, in one woman's heart, the island's spirit found its voice. A story of resilience, courage, and the unbreakable bond between humanity and the vast, mysterious ocean surrounding us. Amelia Winters, the lighthouse keeper of Rockhaven, had etched her name into the annals of legend, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit when faced with the unknown. In the tranquil, sun-drenched embrace of Hanalei Bay, Kauai, back in 2005, the breathtaking beauty of nature hid the hidden perils beneath its surface. This bay, famed for its crystal-clear waters and monumental waves, had become a hallowed ground for surfers across the globe. Among the thunderous waves, it was here that the destinies of two young men, Jackson Pierce and Liam Gray, became entangled with fate in a manner that would irrevocably change their lives. Jackson, a dynamic soul with an oceanic passion as profound as the sea itself, had journeyed to Hawaii from the lively streets of San Francisco, seeking waves that murmured of ancient heroes. Liam, his closest companion, shared this deep connection with the sea a link forged from childhood dreams and endless summers spent pursuing the horizon on their surfboards. Together, they were inseparable, two spirits navigating the surges of life. On the destined day, the sky boasted a pristine blue, with the sun showering golden rays over the sea, creating an idyllic backdrop for the yearly Hanalei Surf Contest. 
surfers from every corner of the earth had convened, their hearts buoyant with the excitement of the forthcoming challenge. Jackson and Liam among the participants radiated with the joy of the contest that lay before them. The competition began with the symphonic crash of waves against the sand, displaying nature's formidable power. Jackson and Liam with their adept surfing skills moved through the water with elegance, their boards cutting through the waves with precision. They progressed through the rounds, drawing closer to the ultimate face-off, their resolve unwavering. Yet, in its vast and unpredictable essence, the ocean housed a silent observer. A great white shark, attracted by the disturbance, stealthily prowled the depths, its primal instincts aroused. As Jackson and Liam ventured out for their concluding round, a Sudin, fierce disturbancy abruptly disrupted the moment's serenity. A towering wave surpassing any they had encountered, ascended from the ocean's heart, its peak shimmering in the sunlight. Riding atop this considerable wave, Jackson experienced an adrenaline rush, oblivious to the shadow swiftly approaching from below. In an instant, turmoil erupted. The shark, a titan of the deep, initiated its assault, its mouth agape. The audience's cheers morphed into shrieks of terror as the waters around Jackson were stained with blood. In a valiant effort to rescue his friend, Liam paddled toward Jackson with all his might, his heart racing with dread. He reached Jackson just as the shark prepared for another attack, its eyes fixed with a predatory glare. With desperation-fueled bravery, Liam endeavored to keep Jackson afloat, his actions a glimmer of hope amidst the looming disaster. However, destiny cruelly shifted, and the shark redirected its focus towards Liam. In a moment, Liam vanished beneath the waves, seized by the colossal beast, leaving Jackson in shock and disbelief. Rescued by the swift action of the lifeguards, Jackson was brought ashore, his body marked by the encounter, but his spirit shattered by the loss of his best friend. The tragic event's news spread rapidly, enveloping the surfing community in a veil of sorrow. As Jackson healed from his physical wounds, his mind was besieged by the haunting memories of that day. Survivor's guilt burdened his soul, a constant reminder of their dream's cost. Once a source of jubilation and liberation, the ocean had become a painful reminder of Liam's absence. In the following months, Jackson receded from the world, his surfboard left untouched, accumulating dust in a corner of his room. The waves, which once beckoned him to adventure, now carried tales of grief and despair. Yet, within his anguish, a flicker of determination ignited. Motivated by a new purpose, Jackson embarked on a path of healing and atonement he became a champion for shark conservation, transforming his anguish into a mission that paid tribute to Liam's memory. Jackson dedicated himself to educating communities about the critical role of preserving marine ecosystems and promoting safety in aquatic sports. His initiatives gradually garnered attention, transforming him into a symbol of hope and change. Through seminars, documentaries, and collaborations with conservation organizations, Jackson raised awareness about sharks and misunderstood nature and their crucial function in maintaining the ocean's equilibrium. Years later, Jackson's efforts led to the adoption safety protocols in surfing competitions and leisure water activities. His narrative, a powerful testament to human resilience, inspired many to perceive the ocean and its inhabitants through a lens of respect and understanding. The annual Hanalei Surf Contest, now in honor of Liam, incorporated educational components on marine conservation, evolving into a platform for advocacy and transformation. Though permanently marked by the tragedy, Jackson found comfort in the waves that had once taken everything from him. In its boundless wisdom, the ocean revealed that even in its darkest depths, there lies a beacon of light. Through his actions, Jackson commemorated Liam's memory and ensured that his spirit continued to guide others toward a harmonious existence with the majestic inhabitants of the deep. As the sun lay below the horizon of Hanalei Bay, bathing the waters in a golden radiance, Jackson stood on the shoreline, his eyes fixed on the vast expanse before him. The sea, once a source of anguish, had transformed into his refuge, a place where the echoes of the past blended with the whispers of hope for the future. In the rhythmic dance of the waves, he discovered tranquility, a reminder that there lies the potential for rebirth and growth even amid loss. The survivor's guilt evolved beyond a story of tragedy. 
It became a narrative of courage, affection, and the unbreakable connection between humanity and nature. In the heart of the ocean, where tales of lost souls and brave hearts merge, the saga of Jackson and Liam would forever ripple through the ages, a testament to the strength that emerges in facing overwhelming adversities. Jackson's journey illustrated that every thread of sorrow is interwoven with strands of hope and resilience in the vast tapestry of life. His advocacy served as a memorial to Liam and acted as a beacon, illuminating the path for others to follow and fostering a respectful coexistence with the sea's enigmatic creatures. The annual homage to Liam at the Hanalei Surf Competition became a poignant reminder of the fragile balance between human aspirations and the natural world. It served as a call to action, urging participants and spectators alike to embrace the ocean's wonders with mindful reverence. A legacy of awareness and conservation was birthed in the serene embrace of Hanalei Bay, where the saga of two souls bound by their love for the ocean unfolded. Jackson's transformation from a grief-stricken survivor to a luminary of environmental stewardship symbolized the indomitable spirit of humanity's capacity to find meaning and purpose through the trials of life. Beneath a canopy of stars that twinkled in concert with the glistening sea below, the silhouette of Jackson against the backdrop of the setting sun became a poignant symbol of the perpetual cycle of loss and redemption. The gentle lapping of the ocean's tireless waves against the shore carried stories of resilience and the promise of new beginnings, a soothing melody that spoke to the soul. In this moment of reflection, the memory of Liam and the profound lessons his departure imparted were not lost to the sands of time, but rather immortalized in the rhythm of the sea. These lessons, woven into the fabric of the ocean's song, served as a beacon of inspiration, encouraging all who stood at the water's edge to embrace their dreams with courage. As the night deepened, the celestial dance above mirrored the undulating waves, each star's twinkle a testament to the enduring spirit of hope. Jackson, a solitary figure against the vastness of the sea and sky, became the embodiment of the human capacity to find strength in adversity and to seek redemption in loss. It was a reminder that even in our darkest moments, the natural world around us, with its infinite beauty and timeless cycles, offers solace and the promise that from loss can emerge the most profound insights, guiding us to dance once more with the waves, ever hopeful, ever forward. Amidst the crystal clear waters that embrace the Great Barrier Reef, Dr. Eliza Montgomery, a fervent marine biologist, was on the cusp of an encounter that would redefine her life's trajectory. The year was 2015, and Australia's northeastern shores, teeming with vibrant marine life, served as her research canvas and source of inspiration. Driven by an unwavering resolve, Eliza was on a quest to shed light on the previously unseen aspects of Grey Reef Shark's mating rituals, a key piece in the puzzle of their preservation. The journey commenced under a sun that draped the sea in a cloak of golden radiance. Alongside her, her seasoned research companion James Calloway and their team embarked from the lively hub of Cairns, setting their sights on a renowned shark gathering spot. This locale had been the backdrop for countless hours Eliza had dedicated to immersing herself in the aquatic domain she cherished deeply. As their vessel, the Sea Guardian rocked gently upon the waves, adorned with the emblem of the Oceanic Research Institute, it stood as a beacon of their pledge to decode and safeguard the enigmas of the deep. The air buzzed with anticipation, mingled with the customary nervous excitement that precedes a dive. Yet for Eliza, this was her sanctuary. Plunging into the abyss, Eliza was enveloped by the serene allure of the reef. Fish, shimmering with iridescent hues, wove through her surroundings while the coral sprawled beneath her like a sprawling city of the sea. Engulfed in her element, she meticulously catalogued her observations, her hands moving with a precision born of experience. James, immersed in his studies nearby, was oblivious to the looming shadow that approached. A massive gray reef shark, its sleek frame slicing through the water quickly, caught Eliza's eye. It was a mesmerizing sight that momentarily captivated her with its grace. However, the shark's demeanor swiftly shifted, veering from the norm. It didn't merely pass by, but began circling closer, its gaze fixed on Eliza. In an instant, the shark launched its attack, its formidable jaws ensnaring Eliza's left leg. 
The onset of shock and agony was instantaneous as a shroud of blood clouded the water around her. Fueled by adrenaline, she struggled to repel the shark, wielding her dive knife in a desperate bid for freedom. The encounter was brief, yet fierce, ending as abruptly as it had begun with the shark vanishing into the depths. James, drawn by the disturbance, was by Eliza's side in moments. Time was of the essence. He fashioned a tourniquet and aided her ascent, signaling for immediate evacuation. Their return to Cairns was a haze of torment and apprehension, with Eliza's thoughts lingering on the shark, pondering the motives behind its aggression. The hospital became Eliza's realm in the ensuing months. The damage to her leg necessitated amputation below the knee, heralding a daunting physical recuperation marked by relentless rehabilitation and the challenge of mastering a prosthetic limb. Yet, the psychological battle proved most arduous as she grappled with doubts about her future, profession, and connection to the sea. Nonetheless, Eliza's resilience was unyielding. Bolstered by the encouragement of her loved ones and the global marine biology fraternity, she rediscovered her resolve. Her harrowing ordeal had endowed her with a profound understanding of shark behavior and the perils marine biologists face. Embracing her narrative as a catalyst for change, Eliza ventured back into the waters. Her initial dive post incident was not merely a personal victory, but a symbol of defiance against adversity. Undertaken in solidarity with the myriad marine species dependent on oceanic well-being. In the following days, Eliza emerged as a staunch advocate for the conservation of sharks and the broader marine ecosystem, tirelessly working to replace fear and misconceptions with knowledge and compassion. Her narrative, The Dive of Destiny, kindled a worldwide movement committed to oceanic preservation, galvanizing others to pursue a sustainable legacy. Eliza Montgomery's odyssey, from misfortune to empowerment, is a powerful testament to the indomitable human spirit. She fulfilled her mission through her endeavors and sparked a global initiative for environmental stewardship, illustrating how individual bravery can fuel collective action for a better tomorrow. As the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the Great Barrier Reef, Dr. Eliza Montgomery stood tall, her prosthetic limb a testament to her resilience and unwavering dedication. What began as a fateful encounter with a gray reef shark has become a beacon of hope and inspiration for Marina Conservation World Weedy. With each dive, each lectury, and each advocacy fort, Elisa continued to champion the causes she held dear, reminding us all that from adversity blooms opportunity and tragedy emerges triumph. Through her courage and determination, she reshaped her destiny. She ignited a global movement toward a future where the oceans thrive, ensuring a legacy of preservation and stewardship for future generations.